Sinjin Bossom, author of Love, Bread and Crumpets, View Up the Flu, I Was a Witch Doctor's Clerk, and more recently the science fiction novel The Thing Without a Thing, talks about his new book. But first of all, a visit to Dimton on Sea's new culture complex. Uh, Rembrandt. Uh, oh, yeah, no doubt about yeah, that. Yeah. The sweeping lines, you yeah. know, something like that. Um, isn't that a Picasso? Not the Chipolata, that is. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, oh, that, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, that'll be Chipolata. That'll be him, you know. Uh, Picasso, yeah. yes. I, I bet he had a few when he'd done that, though. No? <laughs> <laughs> Painted during his blue period. Oh, you could see he wasn't happy when he'd done that. <laughs> Well, you can tell. <laughs> oh, so sorry. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, well, I have been enjoying a marvelous hour here uh, in this particular art uh, development with the curator himself, uh, Fred Scutton. Evening, sir. Good evening, viewers. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Scutton. Now, tell me, uh, Mr. Scutton, which of these paintings here is your favourite? Without any doubt at all, sir, that one there, sir. Uh, and painted by... I did that one, sir. Did it myself. <laughs> but isn't that a Rubens? Well, that's... Oh, that! Yeah. yeah, that's a Rubens. Yeah, that's a Rubens. I was talking about that one, sir. <laughs> I don't let myself, but you know, sir. They're both very nice, aren't they? So they both seem to have, you know, a little certain charm, you know. Yes, I... I think this one has more to say, though. Yes. <laughs> They're very popular, that one is, you know. I did it from memory. Really? I did, yes. yes. Just, you know. Well, um, Mr. Scuttle, yes. what can you tell us about Rubens? Rubens, sir, Edward Everett Rubens, <laughs> sir, was born... And when he grew up, sir, he became an artist, you see, sir. Yes, an And he, he was a painter, you see, sir. And he painted these lovely, luscious... Beautiful, unclad, completely naked, you're dribbling, sir. <laughs> Lady, you do understand? Yes, I do understand. Yes, that, that is yes, it, yes. so you see. And it's a wonder he had any time for any work, isn't it, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I do, but he did that. You see, he painted them like that, sir, because, you see, he was a figurist. Mm. He was a traditionalist. Mm. He was a dirty old man, sir. <laughs> I mean, him over here, sir, uh, Rembrandt. Sir. Rembrandt, yes. Johann Sebastian Rembrandt. Yes. He could have painted nude ladies, sir, but he preferred to paint old men with beards. What would you call him? A twit. <laughs> Oh, I'm only joking, of course. We've got a bit of fun with these artists, you know. So. Like, 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 like old Van Gogh, sir. Anything you said to Van Gogh went in one ear and stayed there. Why was that? <laughs> well, he cut his ear off, didn't he? You see? He cut his ear off and sent it to his young lady, you see, sir. Yes, of course. Why do you think he did that? And the bloody hell do I know? <laughs> perhaps, perhaps he wanted to hear from us, sir. <laughs> I'll tell you, sir, that they're a funny lot. These artists are, you know. They're very bohemian, them, you know. Bohemian, yeah. them, they are, sir. They uh, have little peccadillos. <laughs> <laughs> I find that hard to believe, sir. Especially him, who painted that, sir. Aren't they, aren't they those... Scaly things that David Attenborough brings back from Paranoia, sir. No, 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 I think you're getting confused. No, those are armadillos. Arm armadillos, yes, yeah, yes, arm them. Armadillos, I see, yes. sir, yes. Oh. Now, now, tell me, yes, sir. why do you think so many modern paintings are quite so bizarre? I mean, for instance, where are today's portrait painters? Well, sir, all I can answer you with that is where are today's models, sir? Yeah. I mean, nowadays, we're, we're, we're becoming the, the, the look-alike people, so everybody's face is the same. They all go to work together, so they all go to bed together. Well, they go to work together anyway, sir. I mean, everybody's <laughs> becoming the same. There's no individuality, sir. Like, look, look let me give you an example. Yes, let me give you yes, an yes, yes. Over here, sir. Look at that, the Moaning Lisa, sir. <laughs> I mean, look at that face, the way you could almost hear her talk, sir. What is she saying? My girdle is killing me. <laughs> That's what we always say, sir. I'm only joking, sir. And over here, sir, the laughing cavalier old, sir. I mean, where would you get a face like that? I've just seen it, sir. You what? Come into the light, sir. Yes, I'm sorry. God, I couldn't see the wood for the trees. I've just seen your head, sir. Yes? And your face. Oh, it's, it's a little bit of face fungus on that face, sir. Yeah. You'd be a dead ringer for that one over there, sir. Oh, really? You would, really. You've got, you've got, you've got the sort of face an artist loves, sir. It's mm. a challenge. You see, sir, yeah. it is. It's sort of. It, it, it's funny without being vulgar. You do understand, sir. Yeah, yeah. It looks like it's worn out two bodies. <laughs> it's that so 
sort of a face and those delicate aqualong features, sir. Oh. Could you just turn your head a little to the side, sir? Just a little bit more, a little bit more. There we are. That's lovely, sir. Smashing, you you sir. like my profile? No, you've been eating garlic. It's knocking me out of it. <laughs> yeah, I could get you a bit of modelling here, you know, sir. Modelling? Right? Yes, yes. Three, three, three bob an hour, you know. Three shillings an hour? Yes, sir. Is that all? Well, that's all we pay Miss Dimpton on sea, sir. And she's barefoot all over for that. <laughs> three shillings an hour? Yes, sir. I mean, how can she live on that? Well, that and her old age pension, sir. <laughs> she does very well indeed, sir, yes. <laughs> well, indeed. Now, now, yes. Mr. Mr. Scuttle, yes. I believe in this arts complex you have a very marvellous concert hall. Oh, we do. With a concert every night of the week, mm -hmm. sir. Every day. I tell you what, for the young in heart, for the swingers, for the kids, for the way out crowd, yeah. Gypsy Fred and the South Shield Syncopators, sir. <laughs> featuring their gypsy vocalist. You'd go potty, sir. Really? Oh, long black hair, sir. Bare shoulders, low-cut blouse, golden earrings. A lovely fella, sir. <laughs> he, you'd love him. Sir. And he swings. He's with all the modern numbers, you oh, really? know, sir. Really? Oh, you should hear him do. You made me love you. You woke me up to do it. You woke me up to do it. <laughs> Oh, them swinging. You were going a bit there, sir. You were going a bit. I saw that. You got me rather good. But, but what, what? And there we leave the Dimpton complex and return you to the studio. With the closing of the variety theatres, the art of the quick change artist became a thing of the past. But here at least is one... Here at least is one person who's keeping alive this most unusual occupation. Now, Mr. Speedy Zappa, you are a director, producer, writer, and now quick change artist. Tell me, how do you do all these things? Brilliantly. <laughs> I see. Tell me, uh, what made you take up this unusual occupation of, of, of quick change artists? As a protest against my family, they have two speeds, dead, slow, and stop. My father moves like a, like a nudist trying to climb a barbed wire fence. My sister went out with the sailor, and before she could say I'm not that kind of a girl, she was. My young brother, I said, where's my book? He said, it's over there. No, he said, it's over there. I said, if you can show me anything lazier than that, I'll give you ten shillings. He said, put it in there. <laughs> I know it did. Now, I understand that, that some of your quick changes are so fast that, that they cannot actually be seen by the naked eye. Well, I suppose if you mean something like... This, then, uh, yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I must say, that, that really is remarkable. It is, isn't it? Uh, yes. Is it also true that, that um, you not only change costumes sometimes, but also character? Yes, sir. Would you like to see me? Yes, I would indeed. Right, you are. Off we go. Thanks. <coughs> Splendid. <clears throat> I wonder how many of you recognize who this is. I would, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'll have you know, my dear, my father made the Brooklyn Bridge. My father made the Empire State Building. What did your father ever make? What did my father ever make? Look me over, big boy. And just look me over. I fell in love with Mary from the dairy. But Mary didn't fall in love with me. Here, now, now here's one. Here, now listen, listen. Here, Jack and Jill went up a hill for a little hanky panky. Jill came down with half a crown, he must have been a Yankee. There's one, isn't it? <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I give you my most popular request. It's beef! It's beef! <laughs> it's beef! <laughs> but now, what is possibly my most difficult impression? Bye bye, Blues. Oh, I can't keep that up much longer. Not at my age. <laughs> Oh, I'll feel better now. Well, good night, Mr. Morley. Thank you, and good night, Speedy Zappa. And good night, everyone. <laughs> Last night, I held a little hand. It made my sad heart sing. It was the loveliest hand I've ever held. Four aces and a king. Just <laughs> I hadn't finished. 30 days hath September, April, June and November. All the rest have 31. It's so unfair. Just two of the many... Roses are red and violets are blue. So goes the age-old rhyme. But I know roses are blue and violets are red. I've seen them hanging on a line. <laughs> Just three of the... Oh, of the collected poems of East End poet St John Bossom under the title, Life is like a double bed. Why did you call it that? 
Well, I've always believed that that is, that is true of life. It's probably the most profound statement I've ever made in my life, you know. With all the things that like a gun and a posterior and all that, you know, and all the phrases and, and all that, you know, I think it's the most meaningful thing I've ever said. Life is like a double bed. Why? Why what? <laughs> Why is life like a double bed? Well, if you're going to bleed and argue about it, life ain't like a double bed. <laughs> You know, don't get your knickers in a twist. I'm only talking, innit? You know. <laughs> Mr. Bossom, you've yeah. got this reputation for not conforming, for being a bit of a rebel. Yeah, yeah, Do you feel yeah. this is due to your upbringing, your background? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Because like my whole family, we like we don't conform. You know, I mean, why should you? We like. We don't, we, we won't be dictated to, you know, we, like, we do, like, we go our own way, do our own thing, you see, I mean, that's what it's about, man, isn't it, you know. And that, like, my, my mum, she's a rebel. My mum cooks with Kerrygold. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, some mornings, like, when we're, like, having coffee, we just have it, you know, just have a coffee, just like that, you know, when we don't shake the jar and listen to the grand music. <laughs> Unless we, if we feel like it, we do, you know, and we get that nice Jamaican lady from next door to come and, you know, jiggle a bark like it. If we don't feel like it, you know. I mean, the thing is, you see, if you don't conform like nowadays, you know, people think there's something wrong with you, don't they? I mean, like, I've got a long hair, haven't I, you know? Well, you've got long hair as well. I mean, you're, you ain't a fella, are you? <clears throat> anyway, I mean, they see me walking down the road with long hair, and they think, aye, oh, aye, oh, you know, they think straight away that I'm a smoked addict. Uh, uh, smoke addict. You know, I'm a part and all that all the time, don't I? You know, then they find out me name's Bossum. Well, that's a stupid name to give a kid, isn't it? Bossum. Well, it's neither one thing nor the other. <laughs> and then when they find out... <laughs> then when they find out I'm a poet, I mean, they think, I, oh, I, oh, you know, long hair and a poet, oh, I, I, get livid. You know, I could hit him with my handbag sometimes. <laughs> With all this ready-made entertainment available at the touch of a button, do you think there still exists within people the urge to write? Well, all I can say to that, darling, is walls. <laughs> you look at a whitewashed wall anywhere in London, it ain't whitewashed for long, is it? I mean, the grubby little pencils are out, scribbling on there, Kilroy was here. <laughs> Happy New Year to all our readers. <laughs> I mean, there's probably as much feeling gone into Fred Fancy's flow than the whole of Charles Dickens, Romeo and Juliet. I mean, I'll tell you, I've seen some lovely war. I'll tell you, there's a, there's a wash and brush up in Chatham. I've never read poetry like it in my life. Beautiful it is, the meter, it scans, it's poetic, you know. One or two spelling mistakes. <laughs> and some of them illustrated. <laughs> Lovely. Shows vivid imagination in that, you know. It's a beautiful sight. It really is. You should go and have a look. Oh, you can't. Can you? <laughs> but it really is beautiful there. Why do you suppose that they find inspiration in a place like that? Well... <laughs> the solitude. <laughs> The magic of the moment. <laughs> this feeling of being cut off. <laughs> I mean, how can you define the intangerine? Mr. Bossom, may we now have a poem from your new book? Right, yeah, this book is called Now is the Winter of My Discotheque. <laughs> and this poem sums up for me in its entirety all the superfluity of modern living and everyday uh, affairs and all that. You know. The soldier sat in the army jail and his mother had brought him a pudding. But the sergeant said it was against the rules, even though it was a good one. Then he saw the look in the mother's eyes and he knew she was feeling hurt. So he did a thing he thought he'd never do. He helped a soldier to desert. The soldier got hold of his pudding <laughs> and he ran with it back to his cell. <laughs> then, put out your pudding for drink. <laughs> he heard the sergeant yell, if you want treacle on your pudding, put it out without delay. <laughs> the soldier put out his pudding. 
and the sergeant took it away. <laughs> At the recent Samuel Pepys exhibition, no fewer than eight complaints were received that the Samuel Pepys singers did not appear. So we're going to put things right now, and here are the eight Samuel Pepys singers. <laughs> a shy young mate has took a room down at the village inn. Her bedside light is oh so bright and the curtains oh so thin. At nine o'clock she enters her room, at half past nine she sleeps. Lord Clarendon walks quickly on, but naughty Samuel peeps. <laughs> On Tuesday night I kissed her hand, oh, I was very keen. It was eleven inches long, the biggest hand I've seen. But as I kissed that hand, a thought into my mind was put. If that hand had been one inch longer, I'd have kissed the foot. Oh, you know it's right, it's right, I want it's all written down in his diary. I said, pray tell me, what would you do if you fell in the sea one day? Would you tear all your clothes off so that you might swim away? She said I would keep my blouse on, that's the method I'd employ. For the air gets underneath it, and it acts just like a boy. Oh, we know it's right, it's a black and white, and it's all written down in his diary. Yes, oh, we, we know, know it's right, it's a black and white, and it's all written down in his diary. Ladies and gentlemen, very much indeed, and uh, that's all we've time for now, but we look forward to seeing you all again very, very soon. Till then, bye-bye. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.